Good evening, it's Saturday, November 3rd of 2018. Visiting Zerinsky Lake Park along the waters of Box Elder Creek in Omaha, Nebraska. And as we're thinking back, especially over the last three years or so, there have been many people making many predictions about the timing of the rapture. Although we realize these are the end times and we can see a number of different scenarios for those who feel that it could be any day as well as for those who are looking for signs of revival breaking out in pockets where um, people are becoming saved due to changes that they're seeing in this country and around the world as many scandals have been exposed. These are certainly very unique times that we're living in. And as we continue watching the signs of the times as we're directed to do, we realize there's X amount of time and that everything is ultimately in God's control. So even though no man knows the day or the hour, we can clearly see the signs of the times all around us. But we're to be focusing our efforts on living for Him every day and on drawing closer especially motivated by knowing the time is at hand. And for today's scripture reading, I'm going to start in James chapter 4. In verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas, you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now, you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And there's many of us that have the habit of procrastinating, and we may have good intentions and plan to get around to this today or tomorrow or next week, or next month or next year but it's so easy for the time to just slip away and you can see there's quite a few birds out here flying over the lake this evening and only a few leaves remain that have their autumn collars at this time taking a look at James chapter 5 starting in verse 8 be also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You've heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea, 
and your nay, nay. Lest you fall into condemnation. And in Romans chapter 8, as we look at verses 1 through 11, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the soul of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. So here as we see the use of the word quickening in Romans 8 verse 11. It's a reference to time and motivation. As we only have X amount of time. We understand that time is of the essence and we're to be depending on God's will as he's ultimately in control. And now turning to 1 Peter chapter 4 starting in verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that 
when his glory shall be revealed. Ye may be glad also, with exceeding joy, and if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Remember also there's scripture where Jesus tells his disciples that he was hated before we were ever hated. And that as we seek to follow him, of course, will be hated by the enemy. And this is the southeastern part of Zerinsky Lake Park. Getting ready to take a look at Second Peter chapter 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Timothy 3 verse 13 tells us, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And we can clearly see that in the times that we're living in. So many that are deceiving others are already deceived themselves. So that you have the blind leading the blind. But as we repent of our sins and we seek to follow Jesus Christ with a true heart, as we choose to follow him and to turn from our evil ways, he is there to help us along the way. And now turning to Colossians chapter 4. And starting in verse 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer, and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all prayer, praying also for us, that God would open unto us the door of utterance. to speak the mystery of Christ, 
for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So that last part isn't about sugarcoating the word, but about using wisdom to help lead others to Christ in our own witness, as well as how we speak to others. And that's a balancing that we all need help with from our Lord and Savior. As none of us are without sin, we are weak, but he is strong. This man-made grassy hill on the right side is actually the dam for Zerinsky Lake here on the eastern end of the lake, which is fed by the waters of Box Elder Creek. And the drain that you see just ahead in this cage-shaped contraption converts the lake water back into Box Elder Creek. And it continues eastward underneath this man-made hillside. As we continue on, let's take a look at Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And now for taking a look at Proverbs 16, starting in verse 1. The preparations of the hardened man, and the answer in the tongue, is from the Lord. As the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not go unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. And now for taking a look at 
Proverbs 1 and verse 27. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So we should still pray and we can make plans, but remember, we should also pray if it be the Lord's will for this or that. As there are many times in our lives where we see the Lord taking us in a different direction other than what we thought or anticipated. But as we seek to put Him first in our lives, even though we face many challenges along the way, we can rest assured that He ultimately has our best interest at heart. By the way, it was a year ago this weekend that I filmed the video Jubilee Year in the Rapture at Pipestem State Park. So even though none of us know the day or hour, Jesus Christ wants us to be reading the Bible and following the words of wisdom that he gave when he was walking on this earth. God wants us to be well aware of the end times that we're in. And Bible prophecy isn't so much to scare as it is ultimately to prepare so that we can be ready at whatever time God chooses. As there's X amount of time and remember if you live where the time falls back it happens tomorrow morning in case you have any clocks that still manually need to be rolled back and this seems to be a good point to wrap up this video X amount of time